What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. Thanks for rocking with me on another video. On today's video, we're going to be putting in a steering box brace on the Jeep. I'll get the camera flipped around and I'll explain to you why. So when I bought this thing, the uh, unibody was cracked from the steering box. The, this thing has had a rough life. It was cracked along the top of the body, or frame, along the top of the bolt, down through here, up underneath these two bolts, and then back under the frame, mostly all around the inside, around all three of the bolts, and back here, from the track bar mount, down this way, about three inches, was cracked. So naturally, one of the very first things I did when I bought it, was bought these unibody stiffener plates for the the front kit or whatever and when i put my calf app steering on uh, i've been hearing you can see why i've been hearing some more crackling and stuff every time i turn so now i have to grind all of this mess out reweld it and then put the frame brace on so here's what we got in the box um this is your sector shaft guide. This is the guide for the bearing. This is your bearing. These two pieces are like a clamshell that go around the box above the sector shaft. Obviously this is the brace and it only came with these six bolts. Uh, these four and these two I had to get from work as well as these two here. This is not the Iron Man fab kit, or sorry, the Iron Rock kit, but it's a really, really close, really good replica. It's, uh, I don't know, it looks like 3 eighths, maybe quarter inch thick. My application, I'm gonna have to modify this before we even attempt to put it on, because when I put the frame plates on the Jeep, and they wrapped uh, down the unibody and then underneath the unibody structure. So, let's see. This top bolt hole here and that top bolt hole right there, I need to just lob clear off. So I will only use two of the three bolts per side. And I'm fairly sure that's not going to cause a problem because those are the bolts that hold the sway bars in. So... I'm going to unbolt the sway bar, mock this thing up into place and see where I have to cut it. Okay, this bolt is the sway bar bolt here, and the third hole is supposed to be right there. I don't know how well that translates on camera, but there's a chunk of the frame stiffener right here that's covering that third bolt hole. So, I'm either going to have to lob this off with my grinder, or lob it off of the mount. and now that I think about it, lobbing these off with the grinder might make a little bit more sense, but if I remember correctly, this hole was actually cracked. And that's why I welded that piece of frame plate there to put the structure back in that section. But let's get the sway bar off and have a look. Hopefully, <laughs> this isn't going to be too much of a pain because I also welded a piece of that box here. I forgot all about that. <laughs> so my sway bar actually sits a quarter inch off of the unibody already. So hopefully, this thing isn't going to fight me too bad. I have an aching suspicion that it might. But let's get it mocked up and find out. That's lovely. I'm gonna have to do some more cutting. <laughs> I 
remember me telling you this thing's had a rough life? Well, my tow hooks <laughs> are welded on, so I can't just unbolt them and move them a little bit. We're gonna have to modify this on both sides to clearance the hooks so I can even get the bolt started for muck-up. That side I got started, but it's not going over or forward far enough to clear the box yet. So this is, this is stupid. All right, we just got done taking these things for a ride on the death wheel. As you can see, it was a very slight modification on both sides. And then, you know, we hit them with some spray paint while it was still hot. So it's powder coated again. Now, let's go put it back under the Jeep and see what happens. Hopefully, we have better luck this time than we did the last time. Huh. That thing's still a little warm. <laughs> it's crazy what a death wheel does for metal. Uh, still ain't enough. What are we catching on? Oh, never mind. I'm just stupid. Had it lined up wrong. That very slight modification clears the sway bar lead, or the, uh, sorry, factory tow hooks. Perfect. Now they get to stay welded to the frame. And I get to put this boy on and see what happens. Now, I'm not going to tighten any of this shit up. I'm not even going to make them finger tight. Because I'm just trying to see how this thing fits. If you need to modify anything. Ah, a little bit more right here on this on this corner. Just a just a sea hair. This side. Eh, we're gonna go just a little bit more here too. So I'm gonna go grab my pencil so we can get this thing marked. We'll take it for right on the death wheel again. Let's see. same we'll come off of that mark eh. hog out about another half inch of material maybe three quarters of an inch so let's get it unbolted and go back to the wheel okay we're back <laughs> round two through the grinder and let's hope we did better that time Ooh. It slides all the way up in there. That's a good sign, right? Come on, buddy. Are you too good for your home? might have uh, actually taken it off off that time because it's looking pretty damn good what the heck? that hole needs to be cleaned out apparently that bolt didn't go in there very far, but anyway, you get the gist of it. Now, 
this thing, we have to take this off obviously, but this thing bolts onto that. This goes on here. Obviously you, you take this off and the washer off and then you put this on with some Loctite. They recommend blue, but I always use red and don't have any problems. Then this goes on here. My set screws are in a little bit. Probably should loosen them up before I, you know, made myself look stupid for camera. But anyway, I always put my greaser pointing to the inside in case you hit something, you don't snap it off. And it sits up in there like this. See if we can mock it all together real fast. Like that. Then there's that other clamp that I showed you guys earlier that goes above the plate to hold the top of the box on. So, now that we have the first part fitted, I'll go ahead and take this nut off in the washer and get this. This is an inch and a half, by the way. If you have an impact, I highly suggest it. This put on, lock tight it in, and I'll get the clamps up top started, and then we'll be back. Okay, and we're back. And you remember my, uh, my temper tantrum ratchet here from the last video, the cat fat video? See if we can get her to come loose. Because we lost tight in the piss out of this thing. Oh. In that case, I guess it's a guess it's a good thing we took this thing back apart because we did not tighten the piss out of this thing. That was a lie. <laughs> oh man. Sometimes I wonder. <laughs> how all my projects are still together. I swear to God, every time I go to take a bolt off of some stuff, it's just loose again. I don't get it. Anyway, now I gotta go grab my lock tight. Okay, so I just realized all the tools I have in that garage, <laughs> I do not have an inch and a half impact. But what I do have is some red thread locker. As you can see, it doesn't take much, just a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and thread this boy right on there. Okay, we do have this. This is one of those any size, I don't know what you guys call them. Everybody has a different name for them. Speed wrenches, crescent wrenches. Quick wrench, socket set, whatever you call them. Ugh. I call her snug. Now, this is going to be nearly impossible to get on camera. Actually, it's going to be impossible. But what I need to do is get these things up here top of the box or the uh, brace I mean and of course first one out of the bait out of the gate I'm putting backwards because I'm an idiot <clears throat> right there that ought to do it This has to go in there too. Stupid. Probably should have done this one first. This is kind of a shit show, if I'm honest. All right, guys. This uh, this upper clamp 
is a total joke to get together. This bolt has to be put in before you can get to this top one here. But apparently you're supposed to take your steering box bolts loose on the frame and kind of leave the box a little loose before you start all this stuff. That way everything has a little bit of wiggle to it. I, however, did not, still haven't, but I don't think, let's see, you see how far apart these are? I don't think that this clamshell thing is going to tighten up with the steering box bolted in where it is. So now we have to take the steering box loose. So we'll be back. Okay. Steering box is loose on the frame, which gives me a little bit of room to wiggle. And I'm thinking, oh, but that was the ticket this whole time. Now that thing's gonna tighten up real nice. We got plenty of wiggle room on the frame here. I say that like I do. I <laughs> finger tighten these bolts up just a bit too much. Especially that boy right there. Let's find my socket here. There we go. Now, everything's got a little bit of weight. See? So, since we already have this bolt started, let's see if we can get this thing started up in here. Just enough to hold it in place. Get the rest of the bolts. You're supposed to be prepared when you're doing videos like this. And I hardly ever am. As we're on a better angle, you can see this side. This bolt inside here is going to be a total shit show for me to get into place. But my entire video series, my entire channel, I have been telling you guys that I'm kind of stupid. I'm sure most of you believe it. And if you don't, you're about to. Because I know <laughs> I should have taken this apart started that back bolt in there but did I absolutely not instead we are just going to fight it for about 15 minutes until we basically have a total breakdown oh yeah that's nice have a total breakdown and then we're just gonna end up taking it back apart anyway because that's the way you do things you can't do it right the first time, ever. That's not supposed to happen. Another one of those ill-prepared moments. I just wanted to kind of dry fit everything and see how well it all flows together. Now, bearing goes on the shaft. What the heck, it doesn't go, oh, there we go. in there there we go one more you know if this thing still makes noise or still cracks or pops after putting this big fancy brace on here then I'm just gonna have to learn how to deal with it. I'll turn the radio up a little bit or something. But there you have it. That's uh, that's the finished product on the steering box brace from, well, this one's an eBay special, but it is a model of the Iron Man 4x4 kit, which is actually 
as I said, it's a pretty nice kit. Getting mud inside all my sway bar holes. Anyway, this is a pretty nice kit, all in all. Uh, definitely worth what we paid for it. I don't know why I keep saying we. Definitely worth what I paid for it. But now, I have to take it all back apart anyway. Because as I said before, I still need to get this inside bolt in there. So I gotta take all this shit back off. And get started trying to put all this stuff together correctly with all the hardware. And once we get everything done, fitted, and all that shit, then we're going to come back for the final fit and tighten so now that the bearings off I'll be back so you remember earlier when I told you this bolt had to be started from the top this one does too except this one is going to be a pain to tighten because it's in the very back corner of that box and because this is already in place Oh, this is going to be fun. Okay, actually, that inside bolt was pretty easy. I just uh, I took this down and I walked it forward as much as I could with this bolt still in place. And just cut, exposed my tiny little Burger King fingers up in there with the nut and the washer. And then I tightened the bolt from the top with this other hand. So realistically, it wasn't that bad. Now let's get the rest of it put together. Loosely, obviously. Because again, all this is just loosely fitted for now. Once we get everything put back in place, we'll go back and tighten it all in. make sure that you still have the movability in these bolts so if you do this don't be an idiot and you know finger tighten your bolts all the way down because then nothing moves like it's supposed to and you need the movement because everything in here has to jive and be smooth All right, guys, she's done. Everything's installed, everything's tight. I meant to film more, but <clears throat> these bolts here were a gigantic headache. That one way back in there. Also, that bolt right there was kind of a shit show. But everything's put back together everything's tightened up and so from what i can feel already it the steering feels so much tighter the noise is gone uh, a lot of the slop in the steering wheel disappeared and as you can see here get this out of the way this um quarter inch of uh, unibody stiffener we got this little gap here but it matches up here really well so i'm not worried about it I do uh, plan to put the stock sway bar back on, but I need to get the brackets because the sway bar actually hits these two. So I need to bring it forward and down, which is what the drop brackets do. Okay, final thoughts. Uh, would I recommend this? Absolutely. It will stop your unibody from cracking. Um, it will strengthen up your steering. It'll keep you from blowing the bearings out of your sector shaft and basically just a great idea for the for the overall steering and safety of your Cherokee but if you do buy this kit and put it in make sure that you're full of patience that day because today I was not and it, this is what 
what took me so long to get this done is I just I had to stop working to, to kind of goon out a few times but uh it's all back together and I'm very happy with the results so guys thanks for watching